Now, Nigeria's stock market would enjoy the strong first quarter with returns exceeding 39%, is expected to face headwinds in the second quarter of this year. Now, analysts anticipate a slowdown driven by three factors, rising fixed income needs due to the CBN rate hikes, a decline in dividend payout compared to Q1, and the potential dilution of banking stocks due to the recently announced recapitalization exercise. At the end of the first quarter of 2024, the Nigerian Stock Exchange gave returns of 39.47% despite a double rate hike by the CBN. However, at the end of the first trading week in the second quarter, the equities market saw bearish sentiment, which continued on Monday with the market decreasing by 0.38% or 222 billion naira at the close of trading pushing lower the market's return year-to-date to 37.81%. Now, the Monetary Policy Committee, MPC, last month raised the Monetary Policy Rate, MPR, to 24.75%, representing a 200 basis points increase. On the show today, we will review the first quarter performance and outlook for the second quarter, banking NS and the impact on the market. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonia. And now, the Nigerian stock market has experienced a bullish trend since the year began this year, but uh, witnessing significant capital gains for companies affiliated with some of the nation's prominent entrepreneurs, including Tony Ilumelu, uh, Femi Otedola, and Jim Ovia, throughout the first quarter of 2024. These companies are Zenith Bank, United Bank for Africa, UBA, FBN Holdings, Transnational Corporation of Nigeria, and Transco Hotels, which alongside other firms contributed to the impressive 59.13 trillion capital trade volume on the Nigerian Exchange Limited this quarter. Collectively, these companies owned in part by the trio saw their capital soar by 2.64 trillion naira on the NGX by the end of uh, this quarter that just passed. While Otedola, Illumilu, and Ovia may not be the sole stakeholders of their respective companies, their capital gains are intricately linked to the overall performance of the NGX. My guest, Ambrose Omodio, is the Chief Research Officer at Invest Data Consultant Limited. Ambrose is a well-respected investment and company analyst with over 20 years of experience. He is known for his work as an equities analyst, his training sessions for investors, and his weekly webinars. He is also a prominent expert on the Nigerian capital market, providing analysis and insights to investors, the government, and market regulators. Uh, Ambrose Amodion joins me now to discuss further on this uh, recent uh, development. Many thanks for joining me, Ambrose. Thanks for having me, Justin. Yeah. All right, it is indeed a pleasure. Let's just uh, dive straight uh, into it, if we may. Now, the Nigerian stock market gained 39.8% in the first quarter of 2024, becoming the second best performing stock amid economic headwinds. What does this really mean for the nation's capital market, despite a double rate hike uh, you know, by the Central Bank of Nigeria? Actually, it tells you that the market has uh, its own life. You no, know, despite that the economy is experiencing some uh, headwinds. I think that our market is you now returning a good uh, you know, gains for the investors. That's why every investor in the Nigeria market should understand how to invest you know, intelligently and also follow trend. Don't forget that we experienced uh, what we call a uh, you know, December you know, rally, which was Santa Claus rally, which was extended to the month of, uh, of uh, January. And we saw general galloping as a result of what expectation of earnings. And also we saw that the quarterly performance of the listed companies for the previous year was also in, in green, apart from the manual sector that has a uh, no FS losses that also trigger investors' expectation that yes, we have to see a better number from these uh, companies. Yes, we know that you know, during the year previous year, as from September and November, the CPN was also a fact that uh, banks will not pay from their FS gain. Investors mm -hmm. also have factored into, into their work, you know, their decision. But for the month of uh, you know, January, Nigeria market was rated, rated as what well, at the place from all over the world, which was uh, known. Acknowledged by many investors, but in the month of February, we saw the market pulling back as a result of profit taking. Any market in the world, this is the dynamics of the market. After the market have rally, it's said to be what a pullback, as a result of profit taking, also information that we want to diversify their portfolio to another no sector or another instrument. But we saw that in the month of February, it was a profit taking in the market, or in the month of March, it was a rebound. And that was a result of what listed the company, especially the 
no the the power component from uh, transport power mm -hmm. no impacted the, the index for the month of uh, March. Also, also high cap stocks no rebounding powerfully, no saw the life of regular going as as well. One thousand naira no production amount that also impacted the index and returns a lot of money forward for investors. But in the general direction, we saw that some industries or some uh, what we call a uh, sectoral index so it put back because of all profit taking also but for the whole quarter for the first quarter of the year the first thing is a good market for nigeria and that also have given an insight what we expect in the month of uh, no the month of uh, uh, april and the second mm -hmm. half uh, and the second quarter of the year but not you know investors not panicking like the, as i've said earlier in the month of first quarter we saw about 600, uh, 600 basic points increase in rate mm -hmm. and anywhere in the world when we say hike, hike in rate the capital market that is very that has suffered for it. I will tell you they have correlation that when there's high interest rate, you know, we see that interest will move toward to free no what we call a free asset uh, or low risk asset, let me put it that way. Because mm -hmm. in, in any investment there's no totally free because even the bond they are running to the two hundred one, there's also a risk. So no, don't forget what happened in Ghana. That is mm -hmm. why they like where is less risk they now start to move their money because of what interest uh, rate has been high. And also the rate of high also by the and also also to kind of checkmate inflation at the same time attract foreign investors to the economy. Mm -hmm. Today we can see that uh, the inflow of you know, FS has also helped the, the CBN to manage the you know, the crisis was experiencing in the in the in the exchange market. But for me, that is just a little thing in solving our problem. We need don't want to attract foreign investors with high interest rate and push the economy towards the contraction. As we speak now, the private sector already you know crying that there is no fund for them to be because all funds are moving toward to physical market, physical instrument because of high interest rate. That means we are trying to satisfy the foreign investors and also check with inflation or the expense of the economy. Who knows that yes, inflation is having a toll on the economy. We need to balance it. That is where, you know, when we saw this 600 basic point high, you know, it mm -hmm. sent a signal that yes, the economy will go in for it and right. which also we're going to expect. All right, Ambrosa, let's uh, just try and uh, get some um, sectoral review and uh, get some um, some indices um, analysis as well. You know, uh, for instance, stocks that uh, surpass the NGX ASI include the Gary Gupar, well, which accounted for about 150.6%, uh, Dangote Cement about 114.7%, uh, and Boa Cement amongst other ones. But I want, you, I want to get your analysis now, your review of the NGX 30, and plus um, how um, the, you know, the banking uh, uh, subsector actually uh, did uh, for the first quarter. When we talk of NGS, uh, uh, we're talking of the what we call uh, the blue chip companies. These are talk that yes, you know, every investor that look at that I want to look at when they enter the Nigerian market because of what their liquidity in that uh, those stocks in that uh, NGS thirty and they perform well for the month of uh, you know, the month of uh, the first quarter of the year. But what happened that you mentioned uh, the Regu, you mentioned uh, uh, Dangote and Pua leading the world, the gainer start for the quarter. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. in the billionaires in Nigeria. No, they know how to you know because they want to maintain their their rating in the global market. Really, when it comes to fob and all those stuff, I will see how you no know, Gregu taking position in Dangote cement move that stock from as low as uh, you no know, three hundred and eighty to almost seven hundred naira before pulling back now as well of profit taking. Also, how Gregu also move. Gregu move not because of performance; it's because of the personality behind this company. Also, boy, it's not because the performance is outstanding in the market; it's because of the personality behind them and also the holding structure. For the matter that if share in issue. You know, available to the market or both fluid is very small. Price is bound to go up because this stock is not available in the market. And these billionaires are the ones that own this market. And when they move up, they are, their rating also improve. And that's why we saw such stock more those those stock we mentioned on the on the top. And for me, it's good. That's why investors in Nigeria should also go with the billionaires. But I say you know, invest with the billionaires, but invest with caution. Because mm -hmm. these billionaires all over the world, when they are moving, their stock will move. That means if you want to really make money also, after by passing your portfolio, you need to also that the value of these billionaires and know how to take their stocks in your portfolio, either as a defensive stock with your portfolio, also to play to work, monitoring them because they are very, very you know sneaky in nature, so that you won't get your finger bone. Because most times if you are with the billionaires, the day that you sell, you'll be available, you you will know. That's why mm -hmm. follow them when I profit, you want to catch a profit. For me, it's a good thing for the market that we're seeing this right. personality behind our market. And that's also imparted market positively. All right. Let, let's still talk about banking, for instance. The NGX banking and the NGX insurance index appreciated by 14.76% and 26.2% uh, year to date, uh, respectively. But uh, in the wake of the CBN recapitalization and the bank's agenda, uh, are all of this likely to affect uh, you know, their stock value? 
Yeah, for the banking sector anywhere in the world, you know, don't forget that the bank is an engine of any economy. Even with the calculation of what we're expecting, it's going to be a boost for investors that understand how to invest with knowledge. I believe that with the performance we saw in the first quarter, yes, we might see some uh, missed performance in the month of uh, you know, uh, April and in second, in second, uh, in second half, uh, quarter of the year. But don't forget that all eyes on, on the bank to provide the CPN with their work, the, the calculation uh, agenda or their plan how to recapitalize that will open investors eyes on how to work on how to invest in in, in, in banking stock but for insurance insurance is enjoying you no know, positive uh, you no know, increase in their premium that was done in 20, uh, early late 2022 that was December 2022 that impacted positively on Q1 Q2 Q3 of the insurance company in 2023 and that are reflected on their numbers which mm. I know is going to continue mm. also in 2024 that's why a good investor should do what call set of retention and also the parameters of their portfolio and that you see funds leaving the market now for a few things market as more information is on way to the market I agree that there will also be a morning coming back to equity market because as we speak now Naira have been you know the kind of uh, appreciated if we were thinking that Naira have appreciated because of you no know, appreciation from almost as from one thousand nine hundred to as uh, one thousand one. But naturally for international investor, our market is still cheap and undervalued. I believe that when they start coming to our market, the twenty first of Manila, even though funds are leaving the market now, when we start seeing these foreign investors coming back to Nigeria, because all eyes on what how stable would CBN you no know, intervention in the foreign market exchange market be consistent if they know that yes it's consistent and stable they can plan that they are coming to nigeria for a year or two years to stay that will help us all of the market to go up and also they want to see more general you know reform mm -hmm. of this government we have seen how subsidies we were removed we have seen also now you no know, hike in a, in a, in a, you know, in a power the tariff now how is the going to play on the economy because all we need that let the economy be on the path of recovery once foreign better can identify that i'll tell that our market also be a good destination for for foreign investor all right Let's stay with the banks now because uh, most people are really very interested in seeing how it lays out with this recapitalization. And of course, uh, some of them just, uh, you know, uh, disclosed their earnings uh, recently. Zenit Bank PLC, one of Nigeria's largest banks, published its audited account for the fiscal year 2023, showcasing gross earnings of 2.13 trillion naira. This represents a growth of 125.4% year-on-year and is the highest gross earnings ever reported in the company's history. UBA and Zenith Bank have joined Access Core in the 20 trillion Naira club in terms of total assets. Now, the three financial institutions are now the only ones with a total asset base exceeding 20 trillion Naira, which is about $20 billion as of December 2023. Let's get your comment, Amodion. Yeah, for me, the banks have really done well. And as I said, the capitalization will not be a problem for major operators of this bank, especially the Fugas or the First Tier Bank. They are solid enough. If you look at banks that are posting about uh, two point, uh, let's say, you no know, two trillion, let's say two trillion ton of uh, gross earnings for you know financial year end of the day, it's a signal of where they are going. At the same time, despite that, uh, you no, know, most of them have really been parted by FS uh, gain. But go back and look at what is their interest income. They've done well, and that's a result sort of what high interest rate you no know, have seen in this in this, in this uh, period from almost uh, since uh, two years now that the rates have been hiked in Nigeria to checkmate inflation. The banks have benefited from it, you know, massively, and that's reflected on what on their interest income, and that's going to continue. For you, I will say earlier that just for the first quarter of 2024, we have seen about 200 basis point hike. It's also the bank to benefit from it, and I believe that with this, uh, the uh, financial position of the bank, their balance sheet. They can meet 500 billion uh, of the CPN by this fugas. Go back and see if a bank is posting about uh, so 2.7 trillion you know, gross earnings. And you come back to the final position, which is the profit after tax. After the taking care of their work, their cost, uh, their cost is their, their cost of operation, their paid government tax. Also, even there's a uh, you know, impediment about bad loan, they are taking care of it, and they are posting above 500 billion as profit. A signal that the 500 billion. Uh, they, they have mentioned a lot for them. It's easy for them to only that they are given a, a kind of a a a, 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 a guy that they should not use their their, their retained earnings as part of, of the share cap. But I will tell you, this bank have about more than uh, you no know, trillions as uh, retained earnings. It's a plus for them. And also pay their, their dividends to their shareholders as in place. It's also preparing them for to patronize them as they come to the market by way of right or by way of well, public offer. Then for mm. me, it's a good thing for the bank for the for the bank. And it's also send signal to investing public. A bank that posted 669 uh, billion for profit in one year, 
Mm. I tell you that market can meet you know, 500 billion population of what of CPN. Why they have about three, uh, two point eight or two point nine trillion in their 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 energy it's, it's as easy as either you pay dividend or you turn it work to bonus or automatically you're going to capitalize the work, your work mm. your 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 share capital that will make it to heal. For me, this is why I said invest in Africa, open their ears and see, ear, eyes and open their ears to hear and see when they send their capital guideline or the CBN required that before the end of April, they should send to them, that will guide us as investors or analysts to know exactly what for. Already, as we speak now, we know that the, the Fugas are, are, are set to to meet the 500 capital of uh, CBN. There's no cause for alarm. Our banks are heavy. It's not because they want to become to drive the uh, uh, $1 trillion economy we are looking at. For okay. me, there's no panic from banks and stuff. All right, let us project for uh, for uh, Q2. We just started uh, just um, this uh, last week as it is. You know, uh, for market capitalization, uh, it stood at um, 59.12 trillion naira at the end of March, representing an increase of 18.2 trillion naira or 44.49% from 40.918 trillion naira it opened for trading this year. So what do we project, what do we foresee, what trends do we see for the second quarter? Do we see more bullish or bearish? Trends. Yeah, we're supposed to see for me a missed trend in the you know in the second quarter of the year. And this will be driven by one, the first quarter report we're expecting. We have seen rally in Q in Q1, and that's over that when when our markets go up, they are found to be correction. Profit taking also be in the market. But the strength or the position of uh, or the state of the Q1 number that will come from these brands and the general market will give insight. But for me, we don't need to depend more on the first quarter. We have already seen you no know, the performance of most companies in what in in 2023, we saw a missed number. That missed number we saw for generally for the market in 2023. We're going to repeat itself in first quarter because not a change in first quarter of 2024. And we're going to see a missed number. For those that have in 2023, that trend will continue. But for that, that is going to interest us that we have seen appreciation in, 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 our, in our Naira this period. That means most of the market sector that posted loss last year and also in this quarter. Improving their performance because the cost, the production for their you no know, FS loss will reduce because of our sensitivity from uh, from you no know, nine uh, one thousand nine hundred to almost uh, one thousand one now, which is, is a is a good uh, you know recovery. Mm -hmm. But here yeah, we are not yet there yet. We have and get it at nine hundred or one thousand five. But let's mm -hmm. be stable. But that will improve their performance in Q two. That means in this period, I say want to see what a missed performance as we have seen missed earnings for Q uh, for Q right. for Q one coming. Uh -huh. Then it will give insight of what to do. Profit taking will be there, but also mm -hmm. government policy also coming up also also guide investors. Right. Especially now we're talking about the tariff increase. Where we put our money, set of rotation will continue to look for work for this opportunity in terms of our government policy and also expected their earnings. All right, Omosa, a very uh, big thank you to you, Ambrose Omodio, for your wonderful insight and, of course, um, the analysis that uh, you have made on the bank's earnings and the Q1 review. We do appreciate your time as always. Thanks for having me. All right, Ambrose Omodon is a stock market analyst and researcher, and we have been looking at uh, the outlook for 2024 20, uh, second quarter and, of course, the bank's earnings that were just released. That's the size of the show for this morning. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there.